Because of delays in the building of the first great railroad across the plains, John Buntractor has replaced Rance Judd with Tom Crosby as engineer. Discovering Judd has changed the right of way, Crosby suspects him and orders the removal of hundreds of pounds of explosives from a tunnel in a mountain that Judd intends to blow up. Unknown to Crosby, Judd ignores this order and instructs his foreman to proceed with the explosion. Crosby and Butch Gore, who have gone into the tunnel, get into a terrific battle. Noah Blaine and his sister Anne arrive at the tunnel with a lunch for Crosby. Judd's foreman, believing the tunnel has been cleared, lights the fuse leading oh. to the buried powder. All right, men! Clear out of here! He's gonna blow! You better let me carry that lunch, sir. We got quite a walk ahead of us. That's all you think about is lunch. Something's happened. Why, he's hurt. Tom! Tom! Lost me! It was a narrow escape. You'd have gone with it if it wasn't for me. Man. You're right, no. Believe me, I'm great. Oh, that's all right. I wonder who was responsible for that explosion. You'd think they'd be more careful. Uh, whoever it was blew up the line. No one. We better get out of here. Two little things I want to talk over with Judd. There's a way out. Come on. objected to blasting the cut through the hills. He wanted to go back to the original survey. But I heard the blast. Well, it shook the whole camp. I guess Crosby must have changed his mind. Mm -hmm. I insisted and had my way. He didn't have a chance to change his mind. Now the cut's made. He surveyed this road, and I put him in charge of construction. And you'll have to take your orders from him. Now, while I deeply appreciate your loyalty, Judd, I must depend upon Crosby. He's the best construction engineer in the business. Well, I'm glad you think so, Mr. Blaine. What's the matter? Never mind. Where's Judd? Him in there. <laughs> and you know just as well as I do that this is hindering our work in the hope of getting my contract. Well, I'm doing all I can to finish on time. What do you want? Crosby was caught in the explosion. Are you sure? I laid him out cold and left him in the tunnel. I didn't know the blast was going off so soon. Keep your mouth shut. Hi, Mr. Blaine. Any mail for me? No mail. What happened to you? Oh, I didn't get away from the blast on time. A couple of rocks hit me. Be all right in the morning. You better have a picture. Yeah, he's here, but I'm not. Hey, did you hear about that black? Wait a minute. A little surprised to see me, huh? Well, but you're fired for disobeying orders. 
You mean for cracking you on the jaw, don't you? Well, here's another one. What's up? Oh, get out of here. I'm all right. I can take care of myself. So, they've fired me, huh? No, no shoot. I'll get even with him for this. Come on, Joe. Now I'll have an understanding with you about blowing up that mountain against my orders. What do you mean? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's no reason why you two can't get along. What's the matter? I just wanted understood that I won't tolerate disobedience from any man on this job. Did you know that Noah and I were in the tunnel during the blast? And we just did get Mr. Crosby out in time. What? What's that? How about this, Judd? Butch is to blame for that. I told him to guard every entrance of the tunnel before he touched off the blast. I don't blame you for firing him, Crosby. I've done the same thing myself. How many times have I told you two not to be around where the men were working? Now, I don't want to see either one of you around the railroad tracks again. Good I'm sorry, Crosby, you took that out of me. Do you realize that I'm doing everything I can to help your father finish this railroad on time? I know, Judd, but there's been so much trouble, so many delays. Hey, Judd, tell her how pretty she is. She likes that better than Aunt Martha's cookie. Noah, will you be quiet? <laughs> Don't you pay any attention to him. I he just thinks he's smart. <laughs> Give us a break. You can't come in until I tell you to stop. Nobody knocking me out of anybody's office and getting away with it. I'm going to get this Crosby one of these days. You'll see if I don't, Joe. This is how our bad luck would never stop. Listen to this. John Blaine, section number 10. The entire wagon train with 2,000 ties lost at quicksand near Paris. Replacement impossible within 90 days. I'm well prepared to meet just such an emergency. How? By sending 10 cutters and 20 teams to Pine Hill. They can easily bring out enough ties to last the 90 days. You hear that, John? I told you Crosby knew his business. You're right, Mr. Blaine. That'll put us up to schedule and relieve a desperate situation. Tell Bart to get the teams ready. Joe Crosby, that is wonderful foresight on your part. <laughs> Riding like mad. I bet the Indians are after him. What's wrong, Rigorous? The Indians, the Indians are coming to tear up the track. How do you know that? I just come from Thunderbird's village, and I saw him making a rawhide rope to do it with. See here, Missouri, are you sure this is another attack? Well, I don't know what you call it. The medicine man has charmed the rope, and the Indians think that nothing can stop him. When is this going to happen? In the morning before the men go to work. Look serious, Crosby. Hey, Mr. Blaine. You give me about a dozen of your men that's handy with rifles. We'll ambush them engines. That'll take the charm out of their rawhide rope before they ever reach the track. That sounds like a good idea. But we want to be careful and not incite the Indians to another attack. And I'm riding with you, Bart. And I'll show you the trail they're going to take and the best place to ambush them. All right, Missouri. We'll line up the men tonight. Come on. All right, then. Back to work. Go on, boys. Come 
last thing I do, I'm going out at the Tom Cross. <laughs> but there's one thing we do have to do, and that's to stop him from bringing those ties down from Pine Hill. Why don't you make a deal with Indians? Have them run off camp for this night. That's a good idea, Joe. What's the news, Missouri? Bill. The Indians are going to put us out of business. Old Thunderbird is sending down some of his braves in the morning to tear up the railroad tracks. That's bad. No. Means another Indian attack. But there ain't going to be no attack. No? No. How's that? Crosby and me have sort of figured the thing out. And we're going to take some of the boys down to Coyote Canyon and ambush them. Sort of sudden-like, you know. Long before they get to the railroad tracks. Yeah. You sure picked yourself a job. Yeah. There's your chance, Twitch. You and Joe ride out to Coyote Canyon. Wait for those Indians that Crosby's men turn back. Then they'll be in a good frame of mind to bargain with. To run off those camp horses. How about it, Joe? Sure, I go with you. Engines will be mad and glad to steal horses. We go now. We can ambush them here and open them up on them when they come around that bend. All right, Missouri. But we better corral our horses here. Yeah. We can ambush them on both sides of the road. <laughs> come on, man. We stop here and watch. When engines ride back to village, we meet them. Here they come. Time, Noah. Come on, man. Let's get back to camp. There they go, Butch. Going to village. All right, Joe. You ride down and head them off. Tell them tonight we help them get horses from Corral. That'll stop white men from building railroad. Go ahead. Just furious about Noah's being with you this afternoon. Oh, you needn't worry about him. That boy can take care of himself. Yes, I know, but he's been threatening to take us back east if he doesn't stop this painting Indian. Back east? <laughs> when Blaine comes in, Butch is going to start something for the good of our cause. Go as far as you like. It's all right with me. Thanks. Everything's all fixed. Kind of framing a little fight, eh, Judd? Yeah. If you don't want to get hurt, you better clear out. I think I'll stay around and see the fireworks. It's all right with me. Now, you listen to me, Noah Blaine. 
I want you to quit chasing and fighting Indians. First thing you know, they'll scalp you. Oh, somebody's got to protect the camp. Well, you'll do it just once too often. <laughs> What can I do for you, Mr. Blaine? I'll have a little of that. Let's hear you. I want my job, Captain. I'm going to be fired. Is that so? Well, I'm building this railroad, and I'll hire and fire whom I please. We are doing it. Better go out there. No, you're right. Follow me. Pardon me, folks, but is Tom Cosby here? No. No, he's down at the spring. Why? Oh, thanks. I wonder what's happened. <laughs> oh, but Ann, I... Hey, Romeo. There's a riot at the saloon between Blaine and his men and Butch's gang. Oh, Ann, you go back to the house. Come on. Oh, my. I found us not to get in any more fights. Aunt Martha! Aunt Martha! What is it, my child? And there's a riot at the saloon. And Dad... There? No! Come back here! And Blaine, come back here! Now, Crosby, let's see you get into that. Remember, I'm not helping you. Him make good fight. I'll show you how to take care of him. No, come back here, I tell you. No, please don't go in I've there. I've got to go in and help Dad. Well, if you're going in, I'm going in too. You can't go in there. You can't fight and stay here. Take her out of the way. She might run to Crosby just as I fired. 